Hi, welcome to the channel. So it seems we're spoiled for choice in the way in which we want to paint a miniature model. We have a number of different techniques we can use and a number of different types of paint. But one of the main things you can do which is really going to determine the quality of your finished model is investing time. Today I want to focus on a technique using a combination of speed paints and just bringing those highlights out um, with some acrylic paints on top. This can give a really good finish to the paint job at the very end um, without investing too much time. So of course we can just use contrast or speed paint. We can still achieve a really good paint job here. This one in particular, one, one sitting, start to finish, done. Looks good, it's only had one coat of speed paints on it. Great for the table. Great on really small models, uh, if you don't have a lot of time to invest. We have our basic mid-range acrylic paints. In my case, it's Army Painters War Paints, in which there's a wide variety of colors, um, metallics, washes, and effects. All of these from Army Painter, really good way of beginning your painting journey. Of course, we can look at spending a bit more time uh, into the model to achieve, obviously, a higher quality finish. Uh, this usually involves really delving into the highlighting and shadows and that contrast in between the two. Uh, with the dragon, you can see this was achieved just with acrylics. Really enhances the finish. Then we have some of the higher grade acrylics. Uh, in my case, it's Duncan Rhodes Tooth and Coats. These paints I absolutely love. The coverage is great. Range of colors set up in triads uh, with a a high, a medium and low tone to each colour. Here's a model I've used with Duncan Rhodes Tooth and Coats and this one I invested quite a lot of time. Um, so there is a lot of time invested in going back and doing the different layers, uh, trying to get those nice blends in there, paying attention to all the small details. This is statue size, um, so I had a bit more room to play with all the details. We'll take a deeper dive into this model from Loot Studios. So I hope you enjoyed the journey. So I've chosen a Zenithal Prime here. Speed paints tend to not perform that well over too dark a prime job. Some people's go to is a slap chop where they dry brush the white on top. And here I have gone a little bit, little bit heavier with the white than I normally would. So I'm using Charmin Chartreuse with a touch of algae green. So the trick with the speed paint is to obviously apply it pretty quickly and quite liberally. So we want to use a good amount speed paints on here that will give it a chance to get a little bit of flow so it can flow down into those recesses to create the shadows and slightly come off the top to create that highlight so if you take a close look at the model you can see it has worked and we've got some highlights on those raised areas uh, but still nothing outstanding. Now we apply some murder scene for the gore and again applying it quite liberally trying to not go over the green. So now at this stage I've got paint coverage over 80% of the model. At this point it's starting to look quite good for the time we've invested in it. It's been pretty quick so far. Now I'm going to apply some acrylics on top. So I've actually skipped using the angel green and jumped straight into the mouldy clothes colour here. At this point I'm looking at obviously the veins, trying to bring the detail into that. Just a matter of picking out those highlights and the parts of the model on the front and top that I really want to pick out those details any parts of the skin where it's ripped on the edges. And I want to bring a little bit of detail to the knuckles, the wrinkled skin on the tops of the fingers, and just give that slight ridgy top of the hand look. Then we're gonna jump into some sulfide ochre and just go slightly on top, a couple of layers of this just to really make it pop and get that little bit of contrast to the Charming Chartreuse colour that we've used. 
and by applying a few layers on top of each other and slightly varying degrees of how much coverage I use, uh, we get a slight bit of variation. Slowly making it lighter and lighter and bringing those highlights to the forefront of the model. And at this point in the painting process, you can start to see we're really starting to get some contrast to that original charming chartreuse color. And just picking out those slight details, uh, less and less with the highlights um, as we go lighter and lighter up through the spectrum. But I think you'll agree it's starting to look quite good and we're starting to get that contrast into the model. So at this point in the model, I'm just getting some lighter colors on for the bone. Uh, this is to really get some contrast uh, from the greens and the reds that we've used so far. Now for the fun part, using the Speed Paint Metallics. So I'm starting off with the Broadsword Silver and the complementing colour that I'm going to use to highlight the silver is the Platinum Crown from Duncan Rhodes Tooth and Coats. As you'll see here, the coverage of these metallics is really good. Of course we're using hoplite gold and I'll be going over that with some dragon's gold as my highlight. And these metallics are what I'm using to really contrast the colours of the model. So from this point on I'm just going to go ahead and finish all of the metallics and then look at touching up those details, the base, the string and the final lot of highlights and washes. So let's go check out the final product. So I think you'll agree um, just how much of a difference adding that extra, maybe one sitting, uh, this wasn't even one sitting's worth. Just going through with some of the acrylics on top of the speed paints, bringing those highlights to the forefront, can just add that little bit more to the model. So if you're looking for that paint job that's in between a display standard and table ready quick paint job, this is something to get your mind into thinking. A blend of the two um, can still look really good for a low-end display model or a high-end tabletop model. So hopefully you've enjoyed having a look at that. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos with the speed painting, the higher end sort of taking my time, getting a bit more layering and detail in. So if you feel like it, leave a comment, let me know what you think. If you enjoyed watching the video, leave a like and hit the subscribe button, join me for more. Um, if you're interested in the Minotaur that I showed at the very start with the speed paint, which was a very quick one session paint with one coat of speed paints, check out this video. Thanks, I'll see you in the next one.